Use the means of today to reach the people of today. The Church Speaks, an episode where the Holy Father, the Pope, and the Bishops of the Philippines speaks about their apostolic letters and exhortations to all Catholic Christians. Pope Francis appeals for workers to be protected properly in the workplace. He cries when they are treated as like spare parts and entrusts them to St. Joseph as he addressed members of Italy's National Association for those injured or disabled at work in the Vatican on Monday. Workplaces, he said, must be safe for workers and those workers must be cared for and protected, underscored Pope Francis. The Holy Father thanked the Workers' Association for drawing attention to the issue of safety in the workplace, where too many deaths and misfortunes still occur. In particular, he praised their initiatives aimed at improving civil legislation on workplaces, accidents, and rehabilitation of people with disabilities. Indeed, it is not only a matter of guaranteeing proper welfare and social security, care for those suffering from forms of disability, he said, but also of giving new opportunities to people who can be reintegrated and whose dignity demands to be fully recognized. He also encouraged them to continue raising public awareness of accident prevention and safety policies, particularly in favor of women and young people, as he lamented ongoing tragedies in the workplace despite technology available to promote safety. Sometimes it sounds like a war bulletin. Tragedies, he observed, begin when the goal is no longer man, but productivity, and man becomes a production machine. With this in mind, he called their commitment to educating and training workers, employees, and society crucial. Safety at work, he noted, is like the air we breathe. We realize its importance only when it is tragically lacking and it is always too late. The Pope said we cannot get used to accidents at work, not resign ourselves to indifference towards them. We cannot accept the waste of human life, he appealed, noting. Deaths and injuries are a tragic social impoverishment that affects everyone, not just the companies or families involved. One cannot, in the name of greater profit, the Pope exhorted, demand too many working hours, decreasing concentration, or think of counting insurance or security demands as unnecessary expenses and loss of earnings. Ensuring safety at work, the Pope said, is an employer's first duty and express disgust when entrepreneurs or legislators instead of investing in safety, prefer to wash their consciences with some charity work. Employers, first start, he insisted, must be caring for their brothers and sisters. Workers are not spare parts. We are human beings and not machines. Unique persons and not spare parts, said the Pope. Many times, some workers are treated like spare parts. Human beings, he underscored, come before economic interest, stressing that each person is a gift to the community, and when someone becomes impaired or disabled, it wounds the entire social fabric. I entrust to you the protection of St. Joseph, patron of all workers. We shall continue the Pope's reflection next Sunday. Prayer for the Synod we stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name. With you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. 
let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. This Holy Mass is brought to you in collaboration with Ricardo O. Santiago Sr., Steve G. Santiago and Family, Stu and Nancy Santiago and Family, Stephen and Joy Santiago and Family, Sally Mae Santiago Lim and Benedicto Lim Jr. and Family, Sunny Boy and Luella Santiago and Family, Fancy Mae D. Imbong, Mercy Evangelista and Family, St. John Paul II College of Davao, Royal Bread House Incorporated, Tat and Gigi Coronel and Family, Teresita Villa Abrile, Pure Linao Water Supply Corporation, Mr. and Mrs. Potasio and Fe Takandong and Family, Davao Durian Laundry Services Company, Shardan, JDB Diversified Incorporated, Melvin E. Aviles, Willens Food House, Silvina Datoy and Family, Amelia Diesel and Family, Gus and Sophie, Mrs. Ampi Casas and Family, Adolfo and Malu Ato, Sitar Family. Offering of the Holy Mass. Accept Most Holy Trinity, this sacrifice fulfilled at one time by the Divine Word and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest. I unite myself to the intentions of Jesus Christ, priest and victim, that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people. Through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty, to thank your immense goodness, to satisfy your offended justice, and to beseech your mercy for the church, for my dear ones, and for myself. Amen. We pray for the intentions of our regular sponsors, choir members, donors, offers, and volunteers of the Holy Mass, especially the sponsoring group. Leticia Munda and family, Dr. Sherwin and Peaches and Binalis and family, Land Transportation Office, Region 11, headed by the following. Attorney Loida Egdanes, Chief Operations Officers, Eleonora Calderon, Assistant Regional Director, Oscar Zamora, Chief Davao City North District, Melencio Diaz, Chief Davao City South District, Janet Gunn, Chief Finance Division, Mr. and Mrs. Claudio and Angie Besares and Family, at Chacoso Tagan Family. Thanksgiving Intentions, Dita Tumalip, Anonymous, P.U.P. Salamanca, Pablo Tizol Cruz, Jr., Salvador Family, Sun Life Financial, Friends of Paulines, Emmanuel and Arthur Montalban, Carlos Tan and Family, Emmer Environmental and Human Resource College, Adolfo and Maluato, Lita Montalban and Family, Lilia and Bonifacio Mabilin, Lani Diaz and Family, Dennis Oy and Family, Davao Security and Investigation Agency, Leticia Munda, Dr. Pichis Ann Abinales, Peter and Evelyn Gunn, Janet Gunn, Annabel Gabaldon, Oscar Don Zamora, Eleanor Calderon, Melencio Diaz, Attorney Loida Igdanis. Good Health, Mercy Evangelista, Nelio Emeline Nila Peña, Lilian Bonifacio Mabilin, Ronel Mabilin, Captain Ireneo and Betty Malano and Family, Maria Lita Montalban, Catalina Bacolod, Ernesto and Erlinda Aguilar, Leticia Munda, Janet Munda, Ramon and Perla Hamora, Attorney Julio and Ros Rosita Abinales, Dr. Sherwin Abinales. Birthday Intentions, Charlene Masapa, Ruby Lacno. Birthday Intentions, Ruby Lacno, Kathy Borla, Arias Batong, Wilhelmina Dancer, Linda Hamoy, Merle Rose uh, Sabio, Diwata Pais, Luz Lanillo, Dr. Apichi Samora Abinales, Cyrus Peter Gunn, 
Maria Flores Achacoso, Viuda de Cadaves, Francesca Almorin Bizaris, Himaya Marie Bizaris, Aloysia Clavel Bizaris, Princess Dion Ortiz, Shaira Gumapak, Tony Enrita Priego, Epifania Paras Aguilar, September 15, Ernest Michael Aguilar, Polinar, September 16. Special Intentions, 38th Wedding Anniversary, Clau and Angie Bizaris, the siblings of Leticia Munda, success of Jerry Paul Gunn's job application, successful doctoral defense of Angelito Bizaris, recovery and healing of Emil Sison, Regina Cispedis, Julie Sanz, Linda Torrejos, Rudy Torrejos, Mary Ann Cispedis, Gregoria Ikid, Junard Kent Tomalip, Flora Exala, Jerry Munda, Julie Foster, Mavi Ten, Dr. Pichis Ann Abinales, Bel P, Jujo Manulid, Pinky Cabrera, Francisca Maureen Basais, Maria Flor Achacoso. For the eternal repose of Bernardo, Jermin, Erlinda, Claudio Marotas, Julio Minandro Sr., Anastasia Filipa, Eduardo Ernesto Sr., Jessica Manuel, Rinerio Sr., Conrada, Adelaida Leoncio Damaso, Christine, Manuel Natividad Lina, Jan Hazel Maximo, Wilfredo Lucia, Wilfred, Eric, Felisa, Solomon, Lina, Vicente, Pacifico, Narciso, Felicidad, Agustina, Teresa, Salvador, Hiric, Abundio, Pedro, Reinerio, Virginia, Purita, Francisca, Tomas, Elizandi, Exoperio, Hernandita, all the victims of war and natural calamities, all the souls in purgatory, all the deceased benefactors, sponsors, and cooperators of the Pauline's Media Mission. Prayer for the sick. Lord and Father, God without end and Almighty, through your grace, you gave us strength and help in our weakness. In your mercy, touch your sick people Deliver them from their sicknesses and restore their good health, so that, assured of your goodness and love, they will praise and thank you in your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Brothers and sisters, we live in a world plagued by revenge, hatred, and unforgiveness. This is not the situation God wants for us. In His immense love, He sent His Son to bring us His forgiveness, heal the wounds of our division, and teach us how to live as members of His family. On the day of His resurrection, Jesus appeared to His disciples to give them His forgiveness and peace, and before ascending into heaven, He sent them to the whole world to bring to all the good news of God's merciful love. The presider of the Holy Mass is Father Richie J. Gamaya, Director of Archdiocesan Media Apostolate, Archdiocesan Bible Apostolate, Davao Catholic Herald. The choir during this Mass is the Family Blessing Choir, San Isidro Labrador Parish Choir, Catalunan Grande, Davao City. Let us joyfully celebrate the banquet of love. Please stand as we start the Holy Mass. Oh, 
the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
upon us, O God, Creator and Ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Forgive. If you want to be forgiven, is the challenging message that comes to us from the sage Sirach in today's Old Testament passage. In his typical didactic style, he anticipates almost literally the teaching of Jesus on this same topic, a teaching that is etched forever in the Lord's Prayer. The first reading. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay, and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant, and overlook faults. The Word of the Lord. Or don't 
does the keep his rod forever? Not according to our sins. Thus he deal with us, nor thus regret us record to our cry. consoling truth both in life and in death we are the Lord's we are in the hands of a most loving master the second reading a reading from the letter of st. Paul to the Romans brothers and sisters none of us lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself for if we live we live for the Lord and if we die we die for the Lord so then whether we live or die we are the Lord's for this is why Christ died and came to life that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. According to Matthew, Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, 
How often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of the servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. This is one of the many difficult things to do in life when we are hurt, when someone causes us pain, when somebody offends us. It is not easy to forgive. Uh, this is what we say, it is easier said than done. No matter how we listen to the words of Jesus, my Heavenly Father will do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. We will still be imprisoned by our pride, imprisoned by our pain, imprisoned by the past. That is why we will not be free until we are able to forgive. And yet, it's not easy to forgive. Why? Because we are a people who are easy to, for, to forget. We are forgetful people. If only we remember how good the Lord is to us, if only we remember that yes, we entered into this world bringing nothing with us and we will also return to the Father bringing nothing with us, then maybe it could be easier to forgive. And this is what happened in the first reading when how many times we were reminded to remember or how many times we have heard the word remember the vengeful will suffer the lord's vengeance for he remembers their sins in details the lord remembers their sins in details could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the lord could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself can seek pardon for his own sins if anyone who seek if one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days, set enmity aside. Remember death and decay, cease from sin. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. We easily do not remember the goodness of the Lord. We do not remember our last days. We do not remember the covenant of the Most High. We do not remember that we ask for healing and we do not become healers for others. We easily forget that 
we ask for justice for our sins, compassion for our sins, but it is difficult for us to forgive others. And this is what happened also in the gospel when the servant who owed a huge amount and was forgiven by the Lord, by the master, and when that servant met a co-servant who owed him a smaller amount, he was not able to forgive but demanded a payback. Why? Because he forgot that he only was forgiven. He did not remember the favor given to him. He demanded from others what he received from the Lord, from the Master. Maybe, my dear brothers and sisters, if only we also remember how good the Lord is to us. The Lord who is kind and merciful, as the responsorial psalm tells us, slow to anger, rich in compassion. Since we were little children, since we were in the womb of our mother, since we started elementary, since we went to college, since we graduated, since we started working, since we retired, every time the Lord is kind and merciful. If only we remember His goodness, who are we to demand so much from others when in fact we also have been favored by the Lord so much. And so my dear brothers and sisters, let us ask the Lord that we may become a people who are not forgetful, but a people who remembers, who remember the goodness, the kindness, the forgiveness, the love of the Lord to us. Secondly, what makes us difficult sometimes to forgive is that we also regard ourselves as so important in front of others. But we must return to being unimportant. If we regard ourselves as superior always to others, to be treated with importance, when someone whom we regard as lower than us because they owe something from us, naturally, it would not be easy to forgive. That is why we need to be born again. We need to die from ourselves. The second reading tells us, none of us lives for ourselves. Self-importance. We do not live for ourselves. We are not that important. No one dies for oneself. We are not that very important. It is the Lord who is so important. And it's to Him that we can only be worthy. We can only be important as long as we allow the Lord to live in us, to dwell in us. Pero kung kita lang, wala gano'y intanta ng kalibutan. Only He can make us important. For if we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are of the Lord's. We are nothing in this world except that we are of the Lord's. That is why Christ died and came to life that He might be Lord of both the dead and the living. That is why we find it difficult sometimes to forgive others because we say, I am the superior. He is the inferior. I am the parent. He is the child. I am the boss. He is the worker. I am up there. He is down there. Self-importance. We regard ourselves as important only when we realize we are not really that important unless the Lord lives in us. Unless we die to ourselves like Christ and allow the Lord to live in our hearts. And so my dear brothers and sisters, today, again, we ask the Lord that He may free us from the feeling of being important. So many people are not even known because they are doing humble things. And yet, in front of the Lord, in the eyes of God, they are blessed. They are what we call the unknown heroes. They are saints in the eyes of God. And so we ask that instead 
of thinking instead of feeling we are that important we return to being unimportant just as the lord died on the cross he became a nobody he became non-important at all we just recently celebrated the triumph of the cross last thursday remembering that even on the cross being unimportant won our sinfulness because he said father forgive them for they know not what they do after doing all the good for others he was crucified he was persecuted but he did not complain because he knows where and who he is only sent by the lord to save the world and so my dear friends let us ask the lord that we be freed from being seeing ourselves feeling so important before others and lastly let us also realize that what makes it difficult for us to forgive others which is related also to being unimportant it's because we want always to be recognized by others we want always to be put at the limelight we want always to be the bida almost all the time and that is why even in the gospel reading this person who was forgiven by the master he wants to be recognized by the one who only owed him a small amount he wants to be treated as someone who deserves recognition who deserves good treatment and that is why he demanded so much from the one who only owed him a lesser amount how many times have people become in trouble with one another because of being recognized recognized that they deserve to own for example a land which they inherit from their parents recognized as someone who deserves more of a position than others especially during elections recognized by people because of their good de good deeds because of their donation and so when they are not recognized trouble comes in sometimes they do not talk to others anymore they do not relate with others anymore because they lack recognition yes humanly speaking we need recognition but when that recognition replaces in our hearts the place the dwelling of jesus deep within us we will go nowhere and it would be difficult for us to forgive others because we always want to be treated with utmost recognition with utmost treatment so that we will always feel we are more deserving than others but nobody is more deserving than others except when he follows the example of the lord who live in humility who live in forgiveness jesus who died for each one of us and so my dear brothers and sisters let us pray that we may become a forgiving people by first trying to remember the goodness of the lord to each one of us let us become a forgiving people by allowing ourselves to be unimportant in front of others we are just equal in front of the lord and lastly let us learn to forgive by avoiding just doing things in order to be recognized visible and invisible 
I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, Became man. For our sake, he was crucified and crucified. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are fully aware of our sinfulness and of the duty we have to forgive our offenders. Let us then ask the grace to be as merciful and compassionate as God is. Let our response be, Merciful Lord, hear us. Merciful Lord, hear us. For the universal and our local church, may she be a clear sign, an instrument of God's merciful love for all human beings. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, hear us. For the Holy Father and all our spiritual leaders, may they continue to inspire us with their magnanimity toward those who offend them. Let us pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear us. For our civil leaders and other people in authority, may they set a good example in seeking reconciliation and collaboration with political opponents for the greater good of the country. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, hear us. For the different social classes, may they learn to be fair to one another and work together for the promotion of social justice and peace. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, hear us. For those affected by persecution and terrorist acts, may they forgive those who are responsible for their loss and find peace in God's healing love. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, hear us. For all the souls who died ahead of us, that they be accepted in heaven, especially the victims of war, the victims of the calamities, the deceased members, the sponsors, benefactors, and cooperators of the Pauline's Media Mission. Let us pray. Lord God, help us to imitate your Son Jesus Christ, who forgave even those who crucified him. Grant us the grace to be the signs and instruments of your forgiving love and thereby promote the peace of the kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the grace and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. So, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in, in exhortation we acclaim. so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Romulo our Bishop, all bishops and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Amen. Uh -huh. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, not our day that I should enter under my roof, but let me say the word, and my soul shall be. For those who cannot receive Holy Communion, we pray the spiritual communion. Jesus, Master, you assure me, I am the life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. In baptism and in the sacrament of reconciliation, you have communicated to me this life of yours. Now you nourish it by making yourself my food. Take my heart, detach it from the vain things of the world. With all my heart I love you above all things because your infinite good and eternal happiness. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Trivia Book for Every Christian We live in the world of religious pluralism, wherein we encounter a diversity of religious belief systems coexisting in society. In order to live harmoniously together, we need to respect these different beliefs systems and strive to understand their roots and values. Trivia Book for Every Christian is available at Poland's Media Center, Bolton Street, Davao City at 170 per copy. Thank you.